Thank you very much. So let me thank the organizers for the invitation to present my work here. So, um, okay, I will start by recording the classical construction in K theory that all of you know, and uh, so very probably, and then I will move to applications to operator algebra and generalizations of this uh, construction. So, So the motivation for uh, my talk is uh, something that is very well known classically, which is the Giesen except sequence in K theory. That's a complex K theory. So let me recall briefly what happens classically. So one is a V, which is a Hermitian vector model. Over, let's assume, well, over a locally compact topological space. And uh, using the emission structure, so the emission structure in the fiber one constructs a uh, sphere bundle. And, um, and also, one can also construct a ball bundle over the same space, and the sphere bundle is the boundary of the ball bundle. So, in particular, this is a comp this is compact, this is uh, closed inside of the ball, so one gets an exact sequence in <coughs> relative key theory, and after doing some identifications, one obtains an exact sequence that is of this form. <coughs> so it's a cyclic. Except uh, cyclic uh, sequence, except sequence in, uh, in uh, complex field theory. And the ingredients in this map are so one, so here there's a pullback, here there's a connecting homomorphism, and the map here, which is called alpha, <coughs> is a multiplication with the other class. over classes of the exterior bundles <laughs> up to, of course, the rank of uh, the bundle. Sorry, yeah. a bit short. Okay, so, and um, once you have this exact sequence, you can be used to compute the K theory of uh, certain topological spaces. For instance, it's used uh, in Karubi's book to show how to compute the K theory of the lens spaces. And other topological spaces. So, this is the classical motivation, so what you should uh, have in mind uh, during this talk. So, now, um, what happens if we want to go to, let's say, the non commutative uh, geometric side of this uh, construction? So, uh, in the commutative geometry, there is a well-known dictionary that uh, allows to translate uh, certain classical concepts into operator algebraic versions, so topological spaces are sister algebras, and uh, vector bundles are finitely generated uh, projective modules. So, the question that I would like to try to answer during this talk is, uh, what is the non-commutative uh, analog of the sphere construction, sphere bundle construction. And also, can we do a construction that gives us an exact sequence that has the same form of this one? So what I will do is I will start uh, to review some results that have been established in the last year about the rank one case. So this will be the first part of the talk. Uh, so this will have to be, this will deal with the line bundles, circle bundles, and uh, and the connection with the Kunz theorems and algebras.
which is, and this was obtained by, well, some beans were already there before we worked on that, but it was a, it's based on joint work with uh, my supervisor, Juan Nandi. And uh, Jens Kat from Uzanda uh, and was in Trieste at the time. Cool. Cool, yeah, but I didn't dare try to say it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe sooner or <we'll> later. <laughs> okay, so this will be the part one of my talk, and then the second part of my talk I will talk about what constructions in operator algebras can give us some hint towards obtaining something like this in the higher rank case. So let me just uh, do a brief comment on the exact sequence. Of course, if you here, if you consider here um, for a line handle, then the other class is just one minus the class of the line bundle. And uh, S of L is a circle bundle. So this is. So that will now describe the analog of this uh, classical construction and of the exact sequence. Of course, uh, the motivation was not only that of uh, doing uh, the non commutative version of something, but it was also <coughs> to have a tool that then would allow us to compute the K theory of certain sister algebras, so for instance, certain quantum lens spaces, and, um, yeah, which are algebras that are known to be graph algebras, but for some of them, there was no graph <coughs> model at the time, so this allowed us to compute the K theory in a different way. Okay. Um, Can you remind me on which many spaces there is no graph model? No, now there is, but there was this, uh, the weighted ones uh -huh. yeah. were not completely classified. And in some cases, we were able to compute. Uh, I can give you okay. the, if you want, the application part of this. But there were some lens spaces, so the weighted lens spaces over the weighted projective line. Some of them didn't have a <coughs> not included in, uh, in the graph picture of Hong and Shimansky. So the but now they are? Or, or now they are. Okay, that's now they mean. are by Vizinski Shim uh, Okay. So. Okay. It's always Shimansky. Yeah, there's always a logic. Yeah. <laughs> and okay, so um, said, um, we, as I said, the uh, vector bundles in commutative geometry are finitely generated projective modules. So align bundles are a special case of finitely generated projective modules. So we need a definition. Um, so self homomorphic equivalence is, uh, as the name says, it's a bimodule that implements the Morita equivalence of an algebra with itself. So it's a pair defined where E is a right in the K module. module. So a Hilbert module, for those that uh, are not familiar with the theory of Hilbert modules, is a, ver a variation of Hilbert space so where there is an inner product that satisfies the usual axioms, but <coughs> the inner product takes value in the sister algebras. And this uh, gives rise to some complications. For instance, there is no risk uh, representation theory, but uh, one should think of them as a generalized type of Hilbert spaces. Okay, so we have a right Hilbert module, and then we have a, a left action of uh, the algebra A onto, which, is a, which gives an isomorphism onto the compact operators on the Hilbert module. Okay, so this is an isomorphism. So in general, when one has a Hilbert module together with the left action by adjoinable operators, one talks about sister correspondences, and self moric equivalences are a very special case of system correspondence where the left action is implemented by mesomorphism with the contacts. Okay, so why do they say that these are like no commutative line bundles? Because, uh, well, there are two ways in that they behave like line bundles. So the first one, if the index is compact, and there is an emission, well, it doesn't have to be compact, but it's 
then the modules of section of this line bundle is uh, set for the equivalence over the union consistent <laughs> algebra of the continuous function on the, on the topological space. And the second hint is uh, questions? Uh, also, okay, I mean, this condition is enough to, for self equivalence. This isomorphism. Yes, because uh, there are two ways of defining more equivalence. <coughs> One can define it using the, the Hilbert modules, that, uh, like Hilbert by modules with two inner products that are compatible. Mm -hmm. But this is shown to be equivalent to. <coughs> So let's say this is the definition of a Morit equivalence, A, B, a Morit equivalent, if there exists a, say, right B module, full. Oh, sorry, I didn't write full. OK. Was that a question? Maybe? <laughs> OK. So this is an equivalent definition of Morit equivalence. If there exists a full right B uh, module, Hilbert by module. What do you mean by full? Full means that uh, when you take the closed linear span of all the inner products, then one gets the whole algebra. Okay, uh, so uh, two algebras are more equivalent if there is a full right equivalent by module such that uh, A is isomorphic to the compacts. Yeah. <coughs> this is an alternative way of looking at it. OK, so um, the other reason why these uh, algebras behave like uh, <coughs> uh, sorry, algebras, why, why these modules behave like um, <coughs> line bundles is that one has a way to compose co system correspondence, and uh, uh, there is a there is a group structure on the collect on the set of isomorphism classes of self homomorphic equivalence by modules. And uh, what one gets is a group that is uh, called the Picard group of the sister algebra, and in the commutative case. This uh, turns out to be a semi-direct product of the classical Picard group of the space. So this should be with the automorphism of the algebra. And this group structure is given by the interior tensor product of a sister correspondence. No okay. So um, now, when one is, um, there is a construction which is due to Pimser in the nineties, which uh, associates a universal sister algebra. to uh, every injective correspondence. This construction is uh, very powerful because it uh, includes, a special cases, many examples of uh, sister algebras. So, so it includes uh, the cross products by integers, Quint's uh, algebras, Quint's Krieger algebras, and, uh, well, actually graph algebras and uh, many more, so cross product and partial automorphism. So this is a very <coughs> powerful construction that, that uh, associates a sister algebra to a sister correspondence. So the construction works like this. One starts from uh, the module E, and out of this module one can construct the 
interior tensor powers of the module with itself over the algebra A, and by say, and these are also uh, also correspondences over A. And out of this one constructor, what is called a Fock uh, module. So this is. Uh, let's so this is the Hilbert module direct sum <coughs> of these powers with the convention that the zero power is the algebra itself that you start with. Now on this module, so this module is uh, like a generalization in the sense of the Fox space. And on this module there are uh, shift operators. So whenever one has a psi in the correspondence one starts from one that is in the operator type T psi, which acts on simple tensors but just by tensoring in the first entry. And on scalars using by using the right uh, module structure that one has for free. These modules can be shown to be adjointable. And the adjoint is given by contracting. So and using the, the left multiplication this time. So one takes the inner product of psi with the first entry <coughs> and then acts on the left on the second entry. <coughs> And of course, it's a zero on the scalars. It's a to scalar. <coughs> and um, the Caesar algebra generated by Tig Psi for Psi E is defined uh, to be the triplet algebra of the correspondence. Now, if, uh, if the module E is uh, finite, so let's uh, work with some nice assumptions. So E is finitely generally projective unit. Okay, these are the not the most general assumptions, but they, from what we want to discuss, they are more than enough. So in this case, uh, the compact operators on this uh, FOC module sit inside the triplets algebra. And one obtains an extension. And the algebra period in the quotient is a good beam algebra of the module. What is B? Uh, oh, sorry, A. Um, so, special cases uh, give back. Um, the algebra that I listed here. For instance, if uh, one takes A to be the complex numbers, E to be the complex numbers, then one gets the, the usual triplets extension. Of series one. <coughs> Moreover, if, uh, maybe I should write it in the, here. Uh, we are in the setting that I described before, so X is compact topological space. L is a line bundle over the space, and then an emission. And E is the module that I described before. Then Kunskin's algebra is isomorphic to the continuous function on the well, let's call it SLM. So the circle bundle obtained from this emission line. Now uh, we have this sexy thing in theory. Uh, sorry, we have this extension of sister algebras. So it will induce exact sequence in K theory. Furthermore, it's also <coughs> semi split, so it also induces the exact sequence in K theory, but for this talk we only care about K theory. So we can uh, write down the induced uh, six term exact sequence. Uh, 
And here we have again to do, there are, there are again some identifications that allow us to simplify the resulting exact sequence. So the first thing we can observe is that uh, F plus is also full of C star correspondence over the, coef the coefficient algebra. So in particular, uh, this theater of compact operators on F plus is more equivalent to the algebra of coefficients. The other fact that we can use, which is a theorem, is to be things there, it's in this paper, is that the Toplitz algebra is KK equivalent to the coefficient algebra. And this does not surprise us because I mean, if we look at here, we know that the Toplitz algebra is KK equivalent to the complex numbers. So. And, um, and using the, the KK equivalences that are constructed by Kingsley in his paper, one can simplify the induced the six term exact sequence and one obtains something of this form. Homomorphism, which is given by the uh, Kasparov product with the class obtained by composing the Morit equivalence with the extension cluster of that extension. Here, uh, the map induced here when we identify a T of uh, E with A via the KK equivalence is just the inclusion, uh, the, one, the map induced by the inclusion of the coefficient algebra into the Pinker algebra. And uh, the nice thing about this is that the map that appears here <coughs> is the Kasparov product with 1 minus the class of the module. So in the case of line bundle, what we would have here is exactly what we had classically in the existing system. Of course, this not, does not work anymore when uh, one goes up with dimensions. <coughs> Because of two reasons. First of all, here there are only two terms, and in higher, there are higher rank case we would expect k plus one terms, so there's something missing. And the other reason is that these <coughs> algebras are uh, very non commutative in nature. So if one, uh, so let's take a vector bundle over a point, so which is the model Cn over C, then if one got, does <coughs> Pinsler's construction, the extension that one gets is. Uh, And finds the good algebras of rank, and so it's something completely different from the, from a sphere. So it's, this is definitely not functions on the, on the n-dimensional sphere. And if you one tries, if one does it for a vector model of section of a vector bundle over a space, one gets a field of good algebras. So it's it's not let's say direct construction, but uh, it works in the very low dimensional case. So, um, what's the time? Okay, so let me briefly respond uh, to Piotr's question. About what spaces can be studied. So are there questions so far? Well, I raised the big chord. C star chord uh, correspondence was just like uh, like uh, the So it's a uh, Hilbert by mod Hilbert module on the left, uh, on the right. Plus, uh, so you can actually define it for two algebras. So let me. So if you have two C star algebras, 
A and B, let's say, a C star, an AB C star correspondence is a right Hilbert B module that with an A action given by a jointable uh, operator. Um, okay, so applications. Uh, so this was again in paper with uh, and then well later I that then later there's a conference proceeding that should should appear soon. So um, yeah, so the application that involved the um, computations of K groups. of uh, weighted red spaces, quantum weighted red spaces. So C L Q um so these are quotients of the uh, Q deformed Twelve plus one dimensional spheres by an action of the finite cyclic group, and we we have uh, done computations of the k groups of the Cesar algebras under some conditions. So <coughs> it has to be the product of uh, of the weights, and every weight for every weight there should be a smaller way to the disco prime. So for every i there exists a j less uh, smaller than i such that the weights are prime. And if one works under this assumption one can write down this exact sequence and compute uh, confused groups of these spaces. This quantum space i is one. Uh, if i is 1 is uh, the sister algebra of... Uh, no, 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 I mean, the model we use in this uh, Kuntzminzer model we use is of the Cesar algebras as being total spaces of a uh, circle bundle over Cesar algebra of the weight projected uh, spaces with this weight, or oh, again Q. And again, also here, the first weight doesn't influence the Cesar algebra. But so if you take them one to be one to satisfy these conditions for all J? Yeah. So this condition is not a restriction. Uh, one M I comma M J B. So for each J you pick okay, one yeah. and you pick one. Yeah, 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 yeah. You have this cool data to be one of these spaces. Yes. <coughs> yes. Hey, Francesca, I think you should refer to your error. <coughs> yes, you're uh, pretty. Well, projective space is a smaller system. Yeah, no, of course, yeah, sorry, I wanted to do the geometric, uh, yeah, I know. of course, <coughs> uh, the geometric analogy. Yeah, I will need to think about the, <coughs> the, the weights, but I'm pretty sure... Yeah, I need to think about it, I will get back to you about it. It's not so efficient, but what is the problem? No, that uh, one can always put one here and then one doesn't have any other one. You can exclude one. Yeah. And one, and one are bigger than one. No, but, but the system it doesn't depend on does it. It doesn't really depend on M1. Okay. Yes. So, I mean, um, no, you can say. the product restrictions so. are. I'll think about, uh, to think about it. 
So this algebra for sure doesn't depend on M1. I'm pretty sure. Unless oh, some remember we have other weights in the wrong way. But anyway, so this uh, so the K th so the K theory of these spaces were not uh, completely known, so they were known under much stronger uh, con conditions on the weight, and then we we generalized this in this work as an application of this construction. Okay. So let me now move to the higher rank case. So uh, to deal with the higher rank case, we need a different notion, uh, which is also related to constraints around us, which is uh, that of uh, what are called uh, sub-product systems. So I will explain in a second what this means. So historically, product systems were, well, let's do some history. Um, so product systems were introduced by Arvison in, uh, I think, in the 80s. I think in 89. Um, on a paper that deals with um, continuous versions of Fox spaces. There, he introduced the so-called uh, product systems over over our tasks, which are collections of Hilbert spaces. So it's a field of Hilbert spaces, which with T in R plus, with the property that when you tensor HD with, with HS, you get the uh, Hilbert space labeled by label T plus S. Okay. So later, this was generalized by Fowler. Remember the year? Uh, to the case of uh, what he called product system systems, product systems of the star corresponding process. So there he looked at uh, so semi groups, usually lattice order semi groups, and the uh, product system over semi group S is defined as a collection of C star correspondences. together with isomorphisms <coughs> So clearly the setting that uh, we have been uh, working with it's a particular case of this for the case S equal to M then in that case we have uh, we define to take e, uh, C star correspondence over A and we define EN as before as the interior test of product of the correspondence with itself, <coughs> then the corresponding the collection of the ends of the ends is a product system. Do you assume any associativity? <coughs> Yes. Yes, you need to assume a sensitivity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I want to be a yeah, okay, yeah. But there you need to assume some sensitivity condition. And uh, what Fowler did is uh, out of this uh, ingredients so out of a product system of sister complexes, <coughs> he also constructed universal sister algebras.
that are called uh, now Kuznica pins around here. And then you also have triplets algebras associated to this uh, collection of uh, sister correspondence. Okay, now this is not yet exactly the setting that I want to work with because there is a further generalization of the of a product system, which is, as I said here, some product system. So we'll erase the blackboard and tell you what they are. And the um, so if one um, takes a product system over, so, it's a, uh, so let's say two things. When one deals with a um, set more equivalence, Actually, one can construct a product system not only over n, but actually over the group of uh, integers. And this is why there is this uh, underlying new one bundle structure. Uh, similarly, one can look at uh, so pro um, product systems over n to the k are in some sense iterated uh, uh, Pimser algebras, so k-fold iterated Pimser algebras. But this construction is said work, works uh, in a much more general case for that disorder than semi-groups. <coughs> So subproduct system. So the name hints already at what is going on. So <coughs> this is a U two Shalita Solel and uh, later to Vizenta, who describe the universal properties of sister algebra associated to subproduct systems. So, in the definition, so a family of, uh, of sister correspondences. System is a self product system because it's being identically equal, it's automatically <laughs> complemented. Um, and again, whenever we have a sister correspondence, very special case it gives a sub product system. <laughs> but then I want to talk about a special sub product system that, is, uh, that clarifies uh, the relationship with the uh, sphere bundles and spheres, so that seems to be a promising. Uh, seems to indicate that this is a promising approach, which is the symmetric subproduct system. So as uh, the name says, so let H be a Hilbert space, then one can define the symmetric tensor product of Hilbert spaces. So we define a subproduct system where X has, so, uh, let's say some product uh, over n. This is a product system over n, and H n is defined to be the the n-fold symmetric tensor power of the Hilbert space with itself. 
So in particular, if <coughs> H is finite dimension, so, so H is a complex uh, space, then the subproduct system is uh, just even one like this. Now, given a subproduct system, one can also construct the analog of a default <coughs> module that I described before. And this turns out to be a sub-correspondence of the full FOC module. So let me be more precise. Now we now work in the case in the case in where our semigroup is N. So that uh, let access the uh, subproduct system over N. Then we define E to be X of 1. And out of this E, we can construct the fog module that I described before, so the value is some of powers of n. But we can also construct another Hebert module, which is Fx, which is the direct sum of the excess. And this Fx is a submodule of uh, of the fuller FOC module. Actually, a sub correspondence. Now, in particular, if you do this for uh, the case of the complex uh, space, then you get the uh, symmetric FOC module as a sub module of the FOC module. Now, given a, a subproduct system, as I said, uh, there are already in the paper by Shalita Soler and later uh, Vizet, there, there, was, um, there is a way to construct a universal sister algebra. Is it universal? I'm not sure it's universal. Sorry, there is a way to construct a sister algebra associated to subproduct system. So we mimic basically what happens uh, in the case of things in algebra. So we have this FOC module and we want to we define algebra as an operator that are represented on this uh, smaller FOC module. So uh, the first thing is that X uh, S plus T is uh, complemented. So in so let's say X N is sits inside E to the N to find uh, with this convention, and in particular it is complemented. <coughs> so we have a project, we'll talk about projection. From E to the N on to XN. And now we can proceed in a similar way, so we define the X chief operator. So we take an N, an N, psi, an XN, and we define an operator. It's called SN of psi, and this X on an element of XN, as P and XN. We first concatenate our uh, element with an element of degree m, and then since the subproduct system only gives us a complemented submodule of n plus 7, of all of it we need to project into the part that is relevant for us. And, uh, and the C sets of algebra of L of f x generated by the X shift is called the double algebra. <coughs> of the subproduct system. Okay. 
So it's, it's, uh, it's obvious from the definition of this uh, shift operators <laughs> that the Toeplitz algebra of a C -star of the product system given by a C star correspondence is the Toeplitz algebra that I defined at the beginning of my talk. And in order to define uh, an analog uh, of the algebra OE, one needs to do some work. I don't want to go into the details, but uh, the algebra T admits a circle action. And one can find an uh, gauge invariant ideal inside T. Again, for the case of a finitely generated correspondence that I described before, the state invariant ideal will coincide uh, with the uh, compact operator of Fock module. So this is uh, consistent with the uh, case of uh, Kuntz-Pinz and algebras. And then one defines the C star algebra associated to this uh, sub product system. as the quotient of the Toeplitz algebra by this idea. So again, <coughs> one gets back what uh, I would expect in the Kinsan algebra case, but uh, this is a more general construction. So um, <coughs> let me describe what happens uh, for the symmetric subproduct system. Uh, of dimension of, uh, say, dimension D over CD, then this triplets algebra <coughs> is a D dimensional triplets algebra that was mentioned earlier this morning. And the extension that one gets is uh, <coughs> compact now because they're compact on the Hardy space. Um, say to D, to the dimension of the algebra, and one, one, what one gets here is a continuous mountains on the, on the D, uh, D minus 1 dimensional 2D. Yeah, minus 1 dimensional 2D minus 1. 2D minus 1 dimensional sphere. So this, in some sense, is uh, some hint towards the fact that uh, this algebra should possess a similar structure to that of uh, what? At least as spheres. They behave like spheres. Is a usual compact operators? It's compact operators on the Hardy space, uh, but yes. <coughs> so this is the triplets extension, um, which splits using the number of Zegel projection. <coughs> So yes, yeah, it's, com it's usual compact, compact operators. So this should be uh, a hint towards the fact that this is uh, uh, the right framework. And uh, well, a bit early, but I will conclude with a further remark, which is a work in progress at the moment. So we are confident that we that also um, non-commutative spheres can be obtained in this way. Um, let's say work in progress. So uh, the maximum solver non quantum spheres can also be obtained with such an extension. This is done for SUP2, so I'm not sure it works for we're now working on uh, higher dimensions. And then we have a conjecture which is again yeah, work in progress that 
the, the uh, quaternionic of vibration. <coughs> the sister algebra of continuous function on the quaternionic, uh, of the total space of the quaternionic of vibration can be obtained as a The sister algebra of some product system over C of uh, S4. As I said, this is a work in progress. Hopefully, it will be written up soon. So, I thank you for your attention. The triplets do, but I um, don't think the, um, the quotients have universal. Um, I'm not um, positive about it. So, I mean, what is the representation or triplets representation of the Yeah, surprises? so, okay, you need. Um, yeah, I think what, um, it has to involve this. Uh, this projection here. So, oh, yes, I'm not, uh, I don't remember exactly how the universal properties uh, work, but uh, it's in paper by Wiesel. So. I can refer you to that. Avery and so on. So. May I ask something? Sure. Do you have any idea about the theory of the idea I? I <coughs> In this case, uh, it depends on the case. I mean, yeah, I mean, for the, I mean, in this case, it's clearly, it's easy. Yeah, it's yeah. easy. Yeah, so, yeah. So, is there any? So, my any other case when it's my conjecture manageable? is that in, for instance, in this case, the ideal I will be K equivalent to base. Okay. Uh -huh. But I don't know. But I don't expect this to be true. You know, generality. So. But for uh, yeah, for the case where it's actually <laughs> spheres, I uh, expect this. Yeah. So, do you have an idea what should be this analog of the Euler class, at least for this? Yeah, so Euler the thing is that uh, one has to be able to define this symmetric tensor powers, which com no, commutatively don't make uh, any sense. So the, the way we dealt with the SU2 case is by looking at the invariance by the SU2, by the diagonal SU2 action, action and that worked in, in the case we considered. So, maybe more explicit, so in our setting we start from a C star correspondence that also comes with a SU2 action, for instance, when we want to do S3 bundles, and then we use it as SU2 action to define uh, the determinant line bundle, which is uh, the third term, and uh, and also the the let's say the the higher correspondences that appear in our subproduct system. So at the moment, our construction relies a lot on the representation here of SU2. I don't understand your conjecture because you don't take line bundles, take the yeah. S3 bundles. Yeah, but let's uh, take the associated uh, rank two vector bundle on uh, S4, the coming yes. from the yes. standard representation of SU2. Yes. And this is uh, like taking uh, the sphere bundle of, of this rank two bundle oh. over S4. And, but again, in order to be able to construct this vector bundle and to construct the say the powers that appear in the system, we need to use the, the representation theory of it. Okay, so this, then if you have more questions, you have to look at the lunch.